Well, I'm going to start this tale, and uh, I don't think... <laughs> hey, look, if I was a scriptwriter, I couldn't have even planned these plot twists. I'd just like you to listen to something before I get into something else. What I wanted to clear up was the issue of a video of mine being deleted from BitChute. Uh, this has sort of caused a lot of furor, it sort of freaked me out, caused a lot of pain for a lot of people. I've been contacted by the CEO of BitChute, very nice man by the name of Ray. I actually met him in, I don't know what year it was, but I met him in Acapulco one year. Sorry Ray for any difficulty that I've brought you through all this. Apparently my video was not deleted from BitChute, there was a problem, there was some sort of a server error problem something god knows what it was the problem was when i had the link when i uploaded it just sat there saying processing for hours upon hours and anybody i shared the link with got a 404 and the immediate response was 404 page deleted but ray has assured me that he has not deleted any of my videos nor do they delete videos from bitchute so apparently people have been closing their accounts at bitchute and don't do this ray has said this was indeed and in some sort of a, an error um, apparently the processing is taking an extremely long time with BitChute at the moment because I, I would suggest the servers are probably overloaded because so many people are leaving YouTube and moving over to BitChute. And if I get deleted from BitChute or get deleted from YouTube, BitChute will be the platform that I move over to. A lot of people have asked me why I don't upload to BitChute now, just upload to BitChute. It's because the audience is on YouTube and so you know, these are the people we want to reach. If I were to upload to all right, we're going to leave it there. So you heard Max talk about how the guy, the CEO, contacted him from BitChute. He knows him. And you also heard him say they don't delete videos. Okay. Yesterday, <laughs> I got up to a little bit of mischief and uh, I poked the bear a bit, this bear here, the little garden gnome, and um, well, you know, it's what I say about no matter how many ways you think a person may actually respond to something, it's always going to be the one that you didn't predict that's going to happen, and that's why, uh, yeah, and you can say, well, you mean Max has got that much influence that he could make this happen with the CEO of BitChute that he knows quite well and that he goes to Anacapulco and does the, um, you know, BitChute and, you know, all those other freedom crap shit stuff? Yeah, they're anarchists. They actually are proud to call themselves anarchists. Look at this. This is my YouTube, ch uh, my BitChute channel. Channel blocked. Not one video, not one video blocked or yanked. And as you heard, Max said that they don't do that. Not only has all my videos been blocked, my whole channel, this contact link doesn't work. And I have emailed them off another email that I found, hoping that um, someone will respond to me back off that and tell me why, one, I didn't get anything sent to my email address, two, what breach of community guidelines? I seriously could not have breached com community guidelines that others have not done more of than me and are still there. You know, so tell me, Max, after we had that little conversation through the emails yesterday and you realised just how screwed you are, did you contact your CEO mate and get him to shut down my channel? Hmm? Wonder. Or is it just a coincidence? 
and one must think, wow, I must have said something to really upset this little garden gnome to get him all fired up. Well, he's already got my video yanked off YouTube. But I was poking the bear. I mean, with Max Egan, you don't get anywhere if you're nice to him. You've actually got to be adversarial so that his ego will take over more and get him into one of those little rants because those rants are when people get more when more honesty can slip out by mistake because they're the more angry you get the less control you have over yourself it's that simple and so if you're trying to deceive someone and you're talking fast and you add in something quickly you're not even thinking oh shit that's something I shouldn't have said because you're so focused in the anger of the moment and what you're saying, you, you may not have even realised you said it. I mean, did Max even realise that he said this? I'm just going to pause that and bring up something else. Now, if you've listened to uh, some of Max Egan's videos, you might hear at times where he talks about how he has people bring food round for him. You know, oh, and even the day when he had his meltdown, someone brought him round food that day and he wonders about it. It's like, well, mate, if you're actually wondering about the food that people bring round, whether it might be tainted or poisonous or got something dosed in it, here's a thought. Make your own food. Prepare it for yourself. What do you got, meals on wheels? All the way out there at the top of your little hill in your little crow house? But anyway, this isn't an issue about the food. This is an issue about um, Max Egan is a soul worker. You know, I mean soul as in on his own. He does it all himself. You know, he's only a one-man guy. And when his YouTube got, his first channel got shut down and all the links stuffed up on the web page, you know, oh, he didn't know how he, it was just going to take so long, you know, and he's just one guy. And all the thousands of emails he gets, you know, it's like, oh, please ease back on them because, you know, I'm only one guy. You know, I've got to make all these videos and do all this other stuff and write out a script for myself and answer your emails and produce video quality stuff that is clearly not done by me, but... You know, people have said this, but they can't prove it because I say, I do it all myself. I'm just a one-man show in my shed, me, myself, and I. All right. So, Max is so busy, focused on the January event meltdown that he has, in this instance, opened up and revealed information where he has not revealed it before. And I mean, many people have guessed it because we know that this drunk couldn't have done and it. And then five days of just babbling nonsense. So I'm really lucky that I had the friends that I had around. You can come in, Taylor. I'm really lucky that I had the friends around that I have and, and my young assistant, Taylor, who comes and helps me sometimes. I got her down from Brisbane. I literally talk at her for about 10 hours, literally like I would, have, I would have spoken in a sentence that was like 10 hours long and Taylor was just sitting in a chair just listening to me thinking okay I'm trying to process what you're saying Max but uh, crazy stuff so uh, Max, I'm just lucky I had the yeah, good, good good people around me yeah the conversation we had I mean I'm all right I'm just going to pause it there so you did hear Max Egan say his young assistant now, of course, Max Egan would have plenty of assistants. That comes kind of like, you know, where musos have groupies, fans that will do anything, you know, for their, their, their hero. Yeah. Max Egan just told you out of his own mouth, his young assistant. He added sometimes at the end, that was kind of like an afterthought just to make it sound like, oops, hang on, I'll pull that back a bit. No, not sometimes. Now, 
this is uh, 44 minutes in. Let me just pause it to one hour and seven minutes, nearly eight. Now, just before I bring that up, I um, want to say what I have as far as a personal perspective on what I consider is a coincidence. I think that coincidence are merely things that we do not have the ability to understand how something is connected. And what most people would call a coincidence, um, I don't quite often, in the circumstance that when it happened the first time after I made the comment, hang on, I'll just show you that comment, this comment on his uh, The Crow House 2 on YouTube. I put that one little comment on there within hours that channel and his other channel that was under suspension were yanked and I even said that it was done to you know somehow I call me crazy but I think it's not a coincidence because um, you know what someone's uncovering his, um, his cover and no, I'm not saying Max did it. His controllers did it. Protecting his cover. Protecting the controlled narrative. Both his YouTube channels went down within hours of that comment. And actually, if I'd gone back, back and checked, it probably would have been even sooner. Because, well... He should have been banned from YouTube a long time ago, like Vinnie Eastwood. But they've got people protecting them, haven't they? So just why exactly did it end up in this? Well, I kind of stirred things up a bit yesterday. And, uh, yeah, I sent this email to Max and you can pause and read it in between I'm, I'm not going to read it all out because <laughs> it's it's not a story to be read you can read it know what's going on but ultimately I was calling him out telling him to grow a set of balls and uh, do a video and tell people about the nightcap community folding in and uh, he tried denying it, saying he's not involved. I actually have no involvement in the land. And I like this part. All I did was interview Gunham when they suggested they would give me a place. Give him a place? Tell me, why would they give you a place when apparently the guy selling the, the realtor, you don't even know him. But anyway, why would they give you a place? Oh, but even though these people for some unknown reason would offer to give him a place worth $285,000, I told them if they wanted to do that, well then I would give it to my sister to park her van on. Oh, isn't he just such a generous brother? If someone gave him $285,000 worth of land, he'd give it to his sister. Well, because, you know, and, oh, by the way, he doesn't know Richard Moe. So I just kept goading him, I suppose you would call it that. Being a bit of a smart ass, doing what I do best, because you know what? I've had to uh, take a lot of shit in my life, and so, yeah, I can dish it. I have to take it. So I ended it up with uh, this morning. I sent through to the um, Magical Egypt one instead of his Helix one. Uh, the images. I'll just show you the images. Yes, yeah, so I sent through these images to Max and asked him, do you remember him now? See, so here's Rich Mate, Max Egan, 
Got him. Rich Mike. Max Egan. That's been our pal there. Rich Mope. There's Dean. Met Dean several times. As I've said before. Rich Mope. A B. Rich Mope. Rich Mope. Oh, that's not Rich Mope. That's where they are at 3222 Gogol Road. But that's all public information. I'm not endangering anybody by giving that out. So, um, yeah, bring up the next thing now. So, let's recap the uh, bitches. What I wanted to clear up was uh, the issue of a video of mine being deleted from BitChute. Uh, this has sort of caused a lot of furor. It sort of freaked me out, caused a lot of pain for a lot of people. I've been contacted by the CEO of BitChute, very nice man by the name of Ray. I actually met him in, I don't know what year it was, but I met him in Acapulco one year. Sorry, Ray, for any difficulty that I've brought you through all this. Apparently, my video was not deleted from BitChute. There was a problem. There was some sort of a server error problem something god knows what it was the problem was when i had the link when i uploaded it just sat there saying processing for hours upon hours and anybody i shared the link with got a 404 and the immediate response was 404 page deleted but ray has assured me that he has not deleted any of my videos nor do they delete videos from bitshoot so apparently people have been closing their accounts at bitshoot and don't do this Okay, you just heard him confirm, nor do they delete videos from BitChute. My whole channel's gone. So if he had the CEO contact him over a video that didn't process properly, can I expect the CEO to contact me because my whole channel's been blocked. But then again, I haven't met Ray in Anacapulco and been a fellow speaker with him, and I'm not buddy buddy with him. So, how did my channel get blocked? Interesting, isn't it? Would you say it's just a coincidence that it was working? before this conversation I know that because I um, was organising to upload something else to it so this morning let's see it was up until uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon still working I got a few hours sleep because I'd been up all night and I just uh, needed to get some Zeds and uh, I got back up at, uh, I think it was about five, and I looked at the um, <laughs> bit shoot because I was just going to organise to get that uploaded because they take a bit to process, you know, and first thing it comes up with, channel blocked. Within hours of this conversation with Max Egan, Within hours of my first comment, his YouTube channels get yanked. Now, I have been poking him along and prodding him, yeah, but you don't get anywhere by <laughs> being nice, you know. And considering that the last lot of emails he sent and all the names he called me, let's bring up that one because um, his, com his response in these emails is completely different and it's different because what I'm saying in this email is too close to home I know too much that basically he can't treat me like he did in the last instance because all I thought I he or well, all he thought I knew was where he lived not who he was where he lives 
who his mum is, and if I wanted to, I could jump in my car, drive up the road to Swansea, because I'm in Tasmania. But then I might not get much out of the locals there if there's no old ones there that don't remember the gossip. Hey, I could get better information because, you know, the Quakers community that um, the Cottons came from, that Maxwell Cotton is from, that uh, Max Egan says is his namesake, his uncle Max, and uh, I found all this information out because I did go and search the National Archives. It's very easy to search. So um, I found out that he was actually a Quaker. It was listed on his uh, army report. And I thought, wow, I never knew that because I've got lots of relatives that are up the um, northeast and east coast of Tasmania on farms. They've been there for generations. And it would be interesting to know because if there was a Quakers community set up at Swansea, I guarantee you that would have been the subject of gossip because, you know, they're all Christian goers to church and stuff like that. And Quakers are sort of like the cult type of people. Well, way back then, I mean, um, we're talking back in the 50s. Well, I'll just show you anyway, quickly. See, the reason I've got on this browser the tab of the Swansea Quakers is because I did go to the National Archives and look up um, Maxwell Cotton. As Max said in his video, go and look him up, you know, you'll find him. Well, I did do, after he said that, when I first heard him say that, I did do a Google search and nothing came up at all. And I thought, well... But then, um, yeah, I can't even remember how I ended up getting onto the National Archives and thinking, well, I'll just check and see if there is a military record for a Maxwell Cotton. Now, the interesting thing about Maxwell Cotton is that he has two citizenships, a British citizenship and an Australian citizenship, which is why he had two service records, even though they tie back to the same one, there's a UK service record of him as well. So when I was saying about uh, the Cottons and Max's namesake is uh, Francis Cotton down uh, the, well, over the East Coast here at the Quakers community. And Max, well, Cotton, his father was still living at Swansea when um, all the documentation. Hang on, I'll bring that up. So when you search the National Archives, it comes back with uh, these two records. And as I said, he's got uh, two separate things uh, because of his citizenship. One record is held in the UK and one's held here. So this is the part of the record that shows that he was a Quaker. And uh, the documentation as it goes through on his personal record, it shows a conversation between him and his father, um, not him and his father, his father and the army as he's trying to, sp he spends years communicating back and forth to try and get his son's personal effects. And when he does, um, they're missing two cameras. Got everything else but the two cameras, someone else's souvenir. It's just pretty disgusting. Now, the reason I've bought that PDF and shown you straight away is because that even though I saved this, that it's supposed to take it to a specific record, it says my session's timed out and I have to go back and start it all again. So... Um, I just wanted to show you that. I'll show you how you go onto archive searches and do them. Okay, so it does offer you several different tabs to go along. Where I go to is the name search. You put in cotton. I'll put in that. Ah, oh, I do that every time. I think it'd be a default. 
So I'm putting in the specific name because I've already identified that he's the only one that it could be. Um, so as you can see, it brings up here, you click on this, that's the document that I've come across. And uh, you can download these yourself, it was easy enough to do. This is all public information. So being given that fact that um, I dare say Maxwell Cotton's sister Pauline Cotton, who later got married, um, unknown married name, but easy enough to find out, had a son that later went on to call himself Maxwell Egan. So um, yeah, you, this is just one of the places you can search, but and I've got way off subject here because um, I wasn't even on that, was I? Where are we? I want to know who is really working for Max. I mean, he's got a young girl assistant that comes down. Yeah, kind of the groupy thing, isn't it, for a muso to have fans and get them to do stuff. I wonder what else they do for him. Maybe that's why he hasn't had to go overseas and get in a mail order bride. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I just thought I'd share that. Uh, I do intend to do a much better video on, um, yes, this refusal of Max Egan's to even take any kind of responsibility for promoting the Nightcap Village, denying that he was involved with it. Uh, yeah, after you show him a few pictures and everything. But just the difference in the attitude from how he spoke to me, you know, when he thought all I knew was where he lived. And it's not that hard to find out where he lives. I mean, the guy hasn't even covered up the number 748 on his rubbish bin yet. You know, I put it out in the video, that's how I knew to put in 748, you know? He's an idiot. He did not even listen to the video that he claimed that, oh, I'm going to the cops and seeing a lawyer. It's like, I've done nothing to a real person, mate. Good luck with that. You know, he didn't even, you know, if he wanted me to believe that, he should have actually said that he'd listened to the video so that he'd actually know that he had what kind of evidence or proof to take to the cops. What's he going to go and say, someone uploaded a YouTube about my fake character and they'll say, well, what about? And you go, oh, I don't know, I didn't watch it. Well, how do you know that it's endangered you then? Yeah, he's an idiot. He says things that any normal thinking person can just go, what? Are you for real? Are you that screwed up in your own head that that actually makes sense to you? So I see him in his videos now, still walking around the yard, walking past that rubbish bin with 748 on it, as if, you know, nobody else could piece it all together with all the identifying information and go on to the Gold Coast City Council and type in 748, there are only three choices. And considering that you already know which suburb he lives in, there's only one. You know, the guy is an idiot. If it was that endangering to him, he would have listened to the video, found out how I found him, and made sure that nobody else could do that again. But he didn't. You can still see 748 on the garbage bin. And each house has got its own number printed on the garbage bin in Australia. This is like, seriously, you take a piece from here, another piece from there and all the other pieces and you put them together and the only thing missing was the confirmation of the road it was on. And as I said, 
Gold's Gold Coast City Council only gives you three choices for 748. Anyway, I'm going to uh, leave it at that now and see if um, anything else is going to come, come back because I did give Max, as I've said in here, my main concern is that he tell people what's going on so that um, I've even sent an email to Pete Evans and asked why he hasn't publicly been going around telling people that, you know, advertising it on YouTube and all the other pe formats that he's normally in, why isn't he telling people there? Why is he? I even listened to, and why I sent it to him is because Max Egan just did an interview with him. They mentioned the property and they never said one word about it going belly up. Gutless wonders. They're still going to be sucking people in, taking money until at least the deadline. And even after that, who knows? Because it's all incorporated with all these other properties and businesses as well. It's, it's one great big scam. So when he said that, when I sent those images to him and he said, okay, I recognise his face, but he's got to downplay it. It's like, yeah, sure, mate. You know what? I can see you and Gunham like two little peas in a pod. AB thanked you and Gunham because that's who would show up with Gunham all the time, isn't it? Max. Max and Gunham. Max and Gunham. Max and Gunham. That's why he thanked Max and Gunham for all the work they did because they were in it together, very involved. So it goes against his lie where he says, I'm not even involved in it, and he's not even a member. Well, I've already showed he is a member. So um, I just want him to tell people what he's done. And uh, that basic, well, he can even put it out there like he did the Ken O'Keefe one. You know, I've been ripped off, I've been conned, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. If you if you bought into the place and you've lost your money, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do it to you. But you see, you can't throw a gunham under the bus that easily. Because if he throws gunham under the bus, that means he doesn't have a place to live. Seriously, if I did that to my son in the middle of his gameplay and talking to his mates online... I'd be torn a new asshole. Sorry, I forgot what I was talking about then. Kids, even when they're grown up, they're a pain in the ass sometimes. Sorry, I said that louder because he's coming back up the hall and I want him to know that I am not talking to him, I'm talking to you right now. And as I said to him, can't you hear me talking in there? He knows I'm doing it and he still comes in anyway. Yeah. As I've got problems of my own people, so that's why, as I've said in the past, you've got to go a long way to beat my son if you want to want to give me the shits. <laughs> anyway, so the last thing that I left Max with, and he hadn't responded to it for ages by the time I had gone down for my couple of hours sleep, and I thought, well, good. Hopefully you are going to upload a video tonight and you are going to tell people... Deep breath. <laughs> so hopefully he was going to do a video and upload it. And I was going to wait t to see whether he does that video to advise people. Um, because that depends on how I'm going to approach the next video I do. But then I get blocked by the CEO of um, BitChute, Ray, his buddy. Now, did you remember that Max said the CEO of BitChute contacted him? Why would he contact Max? You know, this is a very small internal problem. Why would the CEO even get involved? No, I'd say the CEO of BitChute is also as much a controlled narrative and controlling the scene for the controlled narratives, protecting them and shutting down people like me that speak out against them. It's why my videos can never be searched either, 
even when it wasn't blocked. Now, I don't know that. But tell you what, it's a pretty good guess, isn't it? I mean, on this side here, the CEO contacts Max because his video wasn't mixing properly and assures him that they wouldn't have deleted his videos. They don't delete videos from BitChute. But they do <laughs> channels. If you're not friends with the right people and you're not saying the right things about the right people. You know, if I'd been criticising the same people as Max Egan, I'd still be on BitChute, I guarantee you. Guaranteed. Controlled narratives. We have really, really got to start paying attention, people. My instincts were telling me this about BitChute right from the start. But they hadn't done anything. And because my channel and my videos couldn't be searched when I was mocking Max and saying, well, good luck finding it because you can't even search for my videos on BitChute. Well, he knows Ray. So he rings up Ray and says, why can't I find this video? There's, there's video out there on me that is giving out my address and it needs to come down. So he didn't just delete the video. I mean, he could have deleted the video and made it disappear and I wouldn't have been any of the wiser for quite some time. If at all, really. But no, my whole channel blocked. Very telling. For who? I had 44 subscribers. 44. And nothing on there that was even any less really I mean there was a couple of things that um, YouTube wouldn't have but they're no different to the million of other things on BitChute that you're not allowed to have on YouTube no this is community guidelines and community guidelines means that it's not copyright so it'll be interesting to see if I get a response from even a worker from BitChute. <laughs> I don't expect one from the CEO because my channel's been blocked with, for no reason whatsoever. I mean, I'm not even reaching that many people. I'm no threat. Why would you even shut me down? You know, I've no Max Egan with 30 and a half thousand subscribers. You know, 44 and those 44 people I'm sure are the ones that when you sign up for the account it says that if you leave this box ticked it goes through to another community forum site or something and other people can get to comment comment on it through there so I'm assuming that that's the only way that I've actually had even people subscribe to the channel or even watch my videos is because it has gone through to this um, other community because um, you cannot you could not search my videos on YouTube even by direct name and my channel by direct name would not come up so you know what's so special about Max Egan maybe it's the fact that so many people listen to him and if a lot of people listen to you you're important well I would say that a lot of people listen to the government. Well, they used to. But that doesn't make what the government says true, does it? People can listen to anything. Listening to something doesn't make it truth. Just means that, uh, well, it how, how you respond to it, whether you're going to be open or closed mind, whether you're going to see it for the information that it is, whether you, whether it's pure information, whether it's motivated because, you know, I've got um, all these channels and an income that's depending on me giving you videos every day and making sure that I've got people to support me 
um, in my endeavours because I need their money in donations on Patreon and Bitcoin and everywhere else. No, I'm, I'm not after that at all. Unlike this guy over here who just, you know, all the channels he's gone to now are the ones that can be monetized, And he's got so many different links for uh, donating to him. Yet he says, I don't ask for money that because his YouTube channel wasn't monetized. Well, it could never have been monetized. All those copyright claims that come up in the that say that you can't monetize it, you, people can still see it, or it might be partially blocked because of it in certain countries, but it can never be monetized. And there's as long as you've got one video on your account like that, your account can't be monetized. And who out there wants to monetize Max Egan's content anyway? Apparently nobody, because you know they're all working for the system. So of course he could never have been monetized on YouTube. Maybe in the first place he might have been. And but anyway, I have gone on and on. I need to check up on some other things now, and. Uh, yeah, wait and see if this uh, gutless wonder called Max Egan is going to do a video and tell people that the nightcap on Minjimbal will never, ever have houses built on it. And when I sent my email to Pete Evans, I asked him, how much money have you forked over? Because I also told him ab ab about the sale not going through and settlement being extended you know and it cost a hundred thousand dollar deposit now that wouldn't have been that would have been someone else's money that would have been put up for that they're always playing with someone else's money I wonder if that was a hundred thousand dollar deposit that uh, Pete Evans had just paid over his his membership or somebody else or maybe it was ten people paying ten thousand dollars each to buy in who knows? All I know is that that money represents someone that's bought into a community to extend the sale of land for to buy it for $2 million that nobody wants now because it cannot be developed. It's, <laughs> it's worthless to develop for profit now. So, yeah. And the, the motivation was never for, uh, you know, reclaiming the land and all of that. So, well, we'll see. Will he still come up with $2 million of other people's money to finish purchasing 3222 Kyogle Road? And he, who, the owners, there'd be another business deal going in to buy that, just like Wollumbin Horizons is the seller through the receiver is also going to end up being the buyer. <laughs> Somebody else will step up and try and do it, but they can't now because it is completely knocked in its tracks. You can't even submit an application to council for consideration. So no, it's belly up. It's done. No hope. And every day that Max Egan and Pete Evans aren't telling all their adoring fans about this, there's another one that could be buying in and adding to that money. And they're not going to say anything because who knows, they might be able to come up with all of the two million and sit back pretty. And then just tell people, well, it's fallen through, you know, this is a couple of months down the track. It's fallen through and um, we can't build on it or development can never go through. They knew this from the 17th of September. Max and Pete Evans both knew that when they did their interview together last night. And even though they brought up the Nightcap community, had every opportunity to discuss what had gone on with it, instead made it sound like it's still a viable option that is exciting that people might want to get into. That, to me, is down-out right fraud. And that's why I've given Max his chance before I get into my next video about telling people his own story. And, yeah, 
for all of you that said that this coward, you know, you'd love to have a live conversation, a discussion with me and him, and especially for that blondie out there that said I'd struggle, I'll bring it on. I tell you what, I'd love to have this guy on. I don't think he's got the guts to face me though. As I said, he's a coward. Because the questions I'm going to answer aren't going to be friendly like all his bros. You know, I'm going to be like Richie Allen was with Ken O'Keefe. Uh, hey, if, he was, if Richie Allen was going to be that way with Ken O'Keefe, he should have been that way with Max Egan. So I'm going to be the way Richie Allen was with Ken O'Keefe. Adversarial, accusing and telling him he has to justify and defend his honour, not me, mine. So, Mr Max Egan, are you going to answer my emails? Are you going to balls up? Huh? Are those prunes going to inflate out into manhood? Hmm? You know how to get in touch. We'll see. I'm not holding my breath though. Because he cannot afford to have someone like me ask him questions. That's why he does friendly interviews. Yeah, he's just like Biden. He does friendly interviews to make himself look good. Do an interview with someone that isn't kissing your ass, mate. See how that goes. Anyway, I've said enough for today. I'll catch you on the next one.